So, hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the last day of uh, the CE Meeting Online Conference. Uh, right now, we are uh, doing two parallel sessions. In this room, uh, we will be having Shani Evan, um, Evanstein Sigolov uh, with a session on implementing Wikidata in educational institutions uh, with a subtitle for us local uh, community CE challenges and opportunities. Um, Shani, uh, you will have 45 minutes, uh, including questions and answers. Do you want me to step it at, at, at one time and tell you, you know, how we're doing with time or? Oh, yeah. Uh, like every 15 minutes would be wonderful because. Uh, 15 minutes to the end, right? No, ev like every 15 minutes. If every 15 you, minutes. Okay. All right. Would be, Perfect. would be amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, Shani, the floor is yours. Oh, thanks so much. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm really uh, happy to be here. Always nice to be at the CE conference and happy that it's happening uh, online this year. Um, so I think many of you know me, but I'm an, um, I'll, I'll introduce myself very briefly and just say that I'm an educator, lecturer and researcher from Tel Aviv University and also a free knowledge advocate in our movement. I'm uh, currently part of the Board of Trustees. But today's talk is really about my uh, work in my capacity as a volunteer and um, my work uh, as an educator and, um, you know, someone doing uh, outreach for many, many years and um, also as a, a bit as a researcher. So what I thought we'll do today um, is kind of divide a session into, because we have 45 minutes, I'll try to divide the session uh, to three parts. First, I wanted to give um, some kind of overview of where Wikidata is in education um, worldwide. So I wanted to kind of give some examples from around the world. In the second part, I'll uh, try to focus more on the academic course that I created and uh, some things that I learned from there. And the third part, I'm really hoping to have simply an open discussion and uh, just talk to, to you, people who are actually attending the session and hearing more about what's, what's been going on uh, at the CE because um, I don't know of much happening in this region in terms of Wikidata and um, it would be nice to, to discuss some opportunities and challenges. So this is the plan for today. And um, uh, sorry in advance if you already know some of the examples, but I do think that um, giving this overview um, matters that it uh, that it's helpful to kind of get an, an, an understanding of where things are. So uh, part one, uh, let's delve into it. So you all know Wikidata as Wiki, Wikimedians, uh, you know it exists, uh, you, all, you also probably know that it's the biggest OER, uh, open educational resource repository that exists that humanity created and Today, it has over 95 million items and counting. Wikidata is growing in exponentially. And because it's under a CC0 license, um, and the beauty of openness is that uh, both external and internal parties to our movement are kind of using Wikidata already. So it's been used not only by us internally as a movement, but also uh, by other existing uh, AI-based agents like Siri and Alexa and researchers and industries and, um, and education as well. Um, I would say from, you know, from my PhD research, trying to kind of map everything, I, I didn't mention, but my PhD is, um, my focus uh, at the School of Education at Tel Aviv University is at the technology and learning um, program and my, my focus, my thesis um, dissertation for my PhD is about um, sem the semantic web as a learning platform and I'm focusing specifically on Wikidata. So um, I'm, I'm kind of researching it and also experimenting with it in the classroom as well, uh, which I'll talk more about in the second part. But I will say that in general, there are, I would say four main interactions with, um, with Wikidata that are emerging from my research. The first is uh, data curation. So the, the, the action of actually adding information into, into uh, Wikidata and making sure that it's, it's existing in, in a structured way. 
then extracting data. And uh, the, the third one is data creation, which I'll talk about uh, in a second, but basically using uh, Wikidata to do a bit more than the first two steps that we might all um, know and understand. And that is using Wikidata to auto-generate content or to create new digital objects that didn't exist before. And the third, the fourth one is research and teaching. And I'll try to show some examples to, to these four things. Um, and I think uh, a few important examples to mention. First is Histopedia, uh, which is a, a an app um, that was created by actually by Wikimedian, uh, but he's doing it completely externally. And um, it's Navino Evans from, from the UK. And he created Histopedia, which allows people to explore timelines in a really uh, easy and visual way. And this is one of the tools that are really helpful to um, explain the power of Wikidata. <clears throat> and Navina actually is working on, on the next phase of Histopedia and, and parts of it is multiple timeline. This is a project that he did for the Prado Museum in Spain. And you can see here that there are parallel timelines, uh, which is quite amazing, right? It completely changes the way that we can learn uh, in context and kind of interact with knowledge. Um, I mean, I remember that when I was young, uh, before Wikipedia, even before, certainly before Wikidata, of course, um, I, I used to sit with, you know, many, many books and try to kind of figure out this painter is with the same um, philosopher at the same with the same period of this musician and kind of map the the history to myself and today we can do it with a click of a button so that's a in a sense a game changer in the way we can interact with knowledge and the way that we can tell stories with data um, so I, I really like this example um, another important example of, of an app developed on top of Wikidata because it's free is Colia, again, developed by some Wikimedians from our movement, Finn, um, and, and um, I think Daniel Mitchum is, all, is also involved in the development and maybe others. But uh, Scolia allows us to, almost like Google Scholar, explore different researchers and different um, um, research institutions or research topics in, in a completely new and visual way. So I really like, um, this is a screenshot, but this is actually a live, uh, this thing on the right here that I pasted is like a live bubble chart that moves and can show us the, um, here I took the example of Tim Berners-Lee and the in different interactions or people that he worked with. So, and, and all of this, all of this information, his list of publications and the publications per year and per topic and Scolia gives a, a list of, of things about Tim Berners-Lee and this is all auto-generated by Wikidata queries um, so it's live and it's uh, completely updated if someone uh, suddenly adds a new information to it so again uh, an example that I like. Um, this is an old example this is a um, Ask Platypus is a tool that someone um, a PhD student from Germany uh, maybe he finished his PhD by, uh, by now, but he created this tool um, that allows us, uh, based on NLP, natural language processing, allowing us to ask a question in, like, with, our, with our voice and for the computer to kind of translate it into writing and give us an answer based on, on Wikidata. So here I asked, who is Luke Skywalker's dad? And I got an answer. So the, the computer actually answered me, there, this was a query behind it, and I didn't need to know Sparkle, I didn't need to know um, to program anything, I could simply talk to the computer and get an answer. This is, um, I like this example because I think it showcases um, the vision of what we have for structured data and for, I would say for AI and machine learning in general, um, the, the ability to understand human language without us needing to you know to program anything. Um, I wanna delve into some of the uh, examples from around the world that are not of apps, but rather of projects that people did. And most of them may be focused on, on education, but not all. And the first thing I'll mention, although it's not completely related to education only vicariously, 
is uh, the women in red. And um, this is a Listeria list. Um, and I, I wanted to mention it because this is actually changing our ability as Wikimedians to kind of curate the work that we need to be doing. So in a sense, Wikidata is helping us monitor some of the knowledge gaps that we have today and, and helping us to organize, to curate, to monitor some of that missing work. And here, um, you know, the Women in Red uh, project is using Listeria lists that are, again, auto-generated from Wikidata um, to kind of see what, what needs to still be done. And I think that's a great example. This could be applied to many other wiki projects and just help us get better at, at uh, you know, curating the work that we do as Wikimedians in, in other wiki projects, not necessarily in Wikidata. So I think that's an important example. Moving to um, one of my, uh, all of the examples here are favorite examples of mine from, you know, talking to many, many, as part of my PhD research, talking to quite many Wikidatans and uh, hearing about projects and experiences. And I like this, experience, this, this example. This is from the Bodleian Library in Oxford, uh, where Martin Poulter from the UK, uh, who I'm sure many of you know, um, he has been a Wikimedian in residence at, at Oxford for like four years. His residency is now over. But one of the things that he did during his residency was to create this website uh, that he called the Astrolabe Explorer. And it was, as he explains it, it was a proof of concept. Um, this website, all the tabs that you see here are basically auto-generated by Wikidata queries. And you can, it's, it's a proof of concept because here he took a collection of one of the related museums to, to, um, to the Bodleian libraries. Uh, and uh, they had a, a wonderful collection of astrolabes. And what he was able to do is kind of salvage it. So instead of it just being in the museum separately without people being able to really explore it, he put all the data on Wikidata and then he created this website to show that you can um, create new, you can breathe new life into different collections um, that GLAMs have. And you can basically help people explore information and learn more in a different and more engaging way. Um, and you can, you can just imagine that whatever collection you have, it doesn't have to be astrolabes you can do the same thing. So that was really an important moment of us being able to showcase how we can, you know, tell a story with data again and how we can, and he, he did it in a lunchtime, right? He, he created this website over lunch. So this also came to show the Oxford University in that sense that, you know, the, the, the money investment, that it's more sustainable, that it's more, um, that, that it's smarter in terms of money investment to, to work with Wikidata rather than developing some apps or websites um, uh, by themselves, which is less sustainable. So I, I really like this example. Another example from uh, the UK is this time from the University of Edinburgh. And there we have Ewan McAndrew, um, who again, many of you probably know and have heard talk about uh, his work at, at uh, the University of Edinburgh, but he's uh, their Wikimedian in residence. And I think, first of all, we have to, I have to mention his position is, um, he's the first Wikimedian in residence in the world that I know of for a new university. And it's something that I really hope to see happening more and more. So institutions understanding that they need someone from our community to collaborate with and kind of explore. And one of the amazing projects that came out from his residency and from his collaborating with different um, courses uh, in campus and different um, faculty members in campus is this um, amazing project of um, really salvaging an academic um, database that they had in, in, at the university of the witch hunts, the 16th and 17th century Scottish witch hunts. And they had this amazing database, right? Um, really high quality and everything. And that database was about to be shut down because they didn't have the money and the resources to keep maintaining it. Uh, 
So what they did is they simply imported the data to Wikidata. Well, not simply, but they did. And after that, they had students working on the data and adding and doing all sorts of things with the data. And uh, then they created this amazing website that now allows us again to completely engage in a new and exciting ways with this material. And this project is important because it kind of influenced, uh, it, there was sort of like a ripple effect of, um, of, of, of sorts from this project because it inspired other projects around the world to continue um, this type of work and these type of projects. And of course, once it's on Wikidata, others in the world can continue to contribute to it and it's easier to continue to maintain. And again, these are all we just- We are cool. about 15 minutes into your presentation. Thanks much. And again, these are um, proof of concepts because um, um, other you can you can take any database from a university, um, and there are many that you know no one there's just no resources to maintain, and put it on Wikidata and just breathe new life to it. And I know there's another example. Um, there are a few other examples, but another one again just just to mention that it doesn't necessarily has to be art. It doesn't necessarily have to be history. There's um, um, at the University of Cambridge, they they actually imported all their gene database into Wikidata. And so they're, they're actually now maintaining their own database through Wikidata, which is kind of an amazing thing. Um, so a research institution uh, rather than a university, but you get the idea. Um, I want to move... I know that I said it's going to be to take 15 minutes, but I think this uh, overview is, is interesting. So I'll try to go more briefly uh, with the following examples, but I do want to go through this because I think these are cool examples showcasing the power of Wikidata for educational purposes. This is um, uh, moving to the US from the UK. Uh, I wanted to showcase the Met um, and there we have um, Richard um, Nipel, who's been the Wikimedian in residence for the Met for, for quite a few, a few years now, and also uh, Andrew Lee, who's been working um, at least for the past year, if not more, as their data strategist. And they've been able to do some quite amazing things uh, uh, in this project. I'll mention three. I think the first one that showcased the power of Wikidata is being, once data is structured, you can use it to unravel things, connections, relationships that were not really available before. And so here in this example, this is a query result where you see in the middle the portrait of Madame X, which is one of the um, most, um, uh, most, it's a really well-known painting at the museum. And uh, what they learned, and the amazing thing is that usually Museum curators know quite everything that there is to know about the artifacts in their collection. But in this case, um, the, the query revealed that the painting inspired a dress that was then um, a black dress that was then worn by Rita Hayworth in the film Gilda. And this, this was something that they simply didn't know and kind of emerged from the fact that we have structured data. So uh, again, a, a proof of concept. And I just want to mention um, integrality. This, um, this is a, a wiki database tool. And you, you see here um, kind of the dashboard of the MET uh, project in Wikidata. But the, the important thing he here is that Wikidata is now helping us to statistically monitor the completeness of collections. And the MET uh, example is important because they released quite a few, right? It's a big project and they have lots of items in their collection. They, it started with the release of 375,000 items under a CC0 license. Since then, they continued to release more. And this table is basically helping us monitor different things. It's everything here is clickable and everything is based on a query. And just having statistics on how complete is the collection is quite amazing. And again, happening, happening automatically uh, through, um, through, through tools like this and through having structured data on Wikidata. 
Um, last but not least, I really like this depiction Wikidata game because again, it's helping um, the audience, the, the public participate in curating knowledge. And here you see a, a, a gala that they had at the Met and they invited a, a whole bunch of people and had these screens where people could play a game and they, they saw pictures from the Met's collection and they had to choose what they see. I think all of you uh, have seen these Wikidata games. This is just one of them specifically to the Met. But from each click that uh, someone did, or yes, there's a tree in this picture, an edit happened behind the scene. And by and by, this is helping us basically answer questions that we simply weren't able to ask before, research topics that weren't available to us in the past. So exciting um, educational opportunities in that sense. Um, I wanna finish this um, section with uh, just mentioning very, very quickly a few um, examples from Brazil, which is an important hub for Wikidata and education experimentation. And this is this specific uh, project happened at Joao's, Alexander Bashensky's um, classes. And um, he did a bunch of, of experimentations, really interesting ones with his students, sorry. And in this one, he is showcasing that, you know, Wikidata is able to, we can use it to reconcile different, um, sometimes clashing, um, sometimes um, unmatching data from different sources. So in that sense, um, Wikidata is used as a, a resource for learning and um, for curating information from different sources that is not necessarily um, happening before. This whole list, this is an excerpt from a list that never existed before of the people who um, died or disappeared during the Brazilian dictatorship. And they simply didn't have, it's a collaboration they did with uh, their archive. So a collaboration between GLAM and education, and um, they were able to create a list for the first time of the people who disappeared and died. And besides the fact that it's moving and actually changing the history of their nation because they suddenly have a piece of history that didn't exist before, it also showcases what, again, Wikidata is helping us do uh, in terms of curating information and reconciling information. Um, this is another exciting example. Uh, what you see here is a wiki book that was completely auto-generated. So again, a collaboration between a GLAM, um, a GLAM uh, institution, in this case, Museo Paulista, that the um, Brazilian community is collaborating with. And they were able to auto-generate this wiki book from uh, information that they imported into Wikidata. So they created a completely new OER, an educational, open educational resource. And this book is just an, an example. They are able now to auto-generate articles on libraries, museums, uh, even earthquakes, newspapers, etc., simply by using temp different templates. And the, the, the bots are doing uh, some of the icky, uh, annoying work of things like tables and, you know, um, some things that we don't want for our volunteers to waste time on. So these are important examples to showcase that the Brazilian example is important because it's a community with less resources. It's a developing country. In that sense, the government doesn't have resources to invent, to invest in curating information. And so what the community is able to do by auto-generating some of the content and then using volunteer time to actually do the things that the bots can't do is a really important example. Um, here, you know, he did another uh, another interesting um, projects with his students. He sent them to basically photograph all the monuments in São Paulo uh, because they never had a list of all their monuments. And so that's what the students did. Each one went and took the coordinates and now they put it all in Wikidata and suddenly they have a new digital object that didn't exist before this map that is now available of all the monuments. And on the right, it's dams in, um, in, in Brazil. So they're able to monitor or again, 
curate for the first time things through Wikidata, which is really exciting. And um, this, this curation and the auto-generation of, um, of content um, actually is really influential on their culture because one of the things that they did is create um, articles on elections in their country, um, the political elections. And these, these articles that they auto-generated and then um, students helped to cu curate the information that bots couldn't, but uh, most of this annoying work was done by bots. And it was, it was viewed over 50 million times um, in, in, in their community, which goes to show how amazing of an impact they actually are changing the history of their, um, of their country uh, in that sense. So really, really inspiring work. And last but not least, I think you all uh, know the example from the Burnt, muse um, the Burnt Museum. So I'm gonna uh, quickly um, go over it, but again, using Wikidata and this tool Tabernacle to kind of curate information to do some data archeology span after the museum was burned down, uh, which is a really exciting thing that we can do as a community. Um, last but not least, Wikidata also helped us curate information on COVID. And I'm gonna quickly go over that because you know that. And we'll just mention in like really four minutes or two minutes um, that um, going to, to my work at Tel Aviv University, I told you a bit, uh, um, at, uh, about what I do as a researcher, but as a lecturer, I've been involved in experimenting with Wikidata for um, over six years now. I think I started in 2015. And I want to mention that there are two main models of implementing Wikidata into education that I can think of. So one, uh, just very similar to Wikipedia, by the way, so one is what we call alternative assessment where using Wikidata is done as a small assignment in a, in a separate course. So I've been supporting different uh, universities in, in Israel, different lecturers who wanted to, to implement or to use Wikidata in their um, courses. And I wanted to mention these because these are sort of low hanging fruits that we know from not only from Israel, but from around the world. So working with uh, information, system information department or computer science or um, departments for digital humanities or um, and in this, in Barilan, I was, uh, um, I've been supporting a semantic web course uh, and they wanted to do a, a project for their students that is actually that, that is actual, that is not just fake data, but that has some, some implications. So we collaborated with the Israeli uh, Antiquities Authority and created a, a project uh, where the students helped map into Wikidata some old historical buildings from, from, a, from a city at the north of Israel. And so uh, again, these files didn't, were never available digitally. So this type of work that we can do with students can actually help us um, do impactful things for our local uh, culture. And the second, um, the second um, model uh, of, of implementing Wikidata is actually using it as a main assessment. Um, and in this sense, in 2018, I opened a course at the university uh, called From Web 2 to Web 3, From Wikipedia to Wikidata. Um, this is based on courses that I uh, actually opened in, um, in 2013 at the university. So I've been teaching uh, and created a course model that I've been then using throughout the years. The, the first one was Wikimed that I think many of you have heard of. And the second, two years later, we opened another course we wanted to scale and to show that it doesn't have to be just medicine, that we can do it for all disciplines, etc. And so um, in 2015, I was able to convince the rector's office to allow us to open a, a course that is now av available to all undergraduate students um, at the university. So every undergraduate can basically take this, this course. And what happened is that every year, 
started um, uh, after Wikidata was uh, started, I, I found out that that every year I'm adding one more session, one more session about Wikidata until in 2018 I said, well, I can't I can't do it anymore. It has to be like a, a main part of the course, and uh, I opened this course, which um, has just been. Uh, recognize them. I'm going through this really quickly. I'll share the, the um, slides uh, if you want to learn uh, more about how exactly I did that, or I can answer questions. But I will say that uh, the main focus, besides uh, you know all the benefits that we know of from using Wikipedia in the classroom, um, this using Wikidata also adds data literacy which is why I was uh, super honored to be, that this course was recognized just now in Wikidatacon. Um, uh, Shani, so, you've got about 15 minutes left. Thanks for the data literacy. Um, um, it got the Data Literacy Community Award, which is really exciting. And with that, I want to say that all the challenges that we still have working with Wikidata, all the difficulties, you know, and I'll go really quickly to the slide of the challenges you know, reliability, verifiability, um, data manipulation, um, how complete is it, the, the problems we, has, we have with data modeling, all of these difficulties or challenges are actually opportunities, I think, and um, there are all the benefits as well. And I think it's an exciting moment in education where we can actually influence some of how the future is, is going on. So, uh, I'm actually excited to stop sharing now and kind of open a discussion and just hear your thoughts and hear your experiences of working with um, with Wikidata in the classroom or in research, in, in sciences, uh, wh whatever you have been doing or any questions that you may have. So I'm going to stop sharing and coming back to, to the floor. Hello, everyone. Now I can see you. So if you want to open your cameras and actually say hello and interact a bit. That would be nice. And it's a good opportunity for me to um, actually check the, the chat and see if there are any questions. But I would really rather for you to just unmute and ask anything if you want. Yes, the yeah. option to unmute is open for everybody. Uh, although if we, you know, start stepping over, over one another, it will be a mess. So uh, we have a tendency to uh, signal this by raising a hand uh, that, that uh, someone from the audience wishes, wishes to speak. Sure. Um, all right. So Shani has uh, invited you for a, uh, for a discussion, for, for commenting and asking questions. Uh, I do not see... Um, anybody raising their hand in the... Um, in the participants list. Uh, I do see a comment from Clara, uh, thanking you, Shani, for the great examples. Mm. And I see a comment from Lelico, but uh, unfortunately I cannot read Cyrillic, so you will have to forgive me uh, for not being able to, to react to that. I see a comment. Uh, so first of all, thanks Clara for for the examples, one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of give an overview is because I know um, that many times, you know, talking to institutions or trying to convince others, um, it's it's really difficult without having some good case studies. It's always the case with outreach. So I think having, you know, a curated bunch of examples is, is helpful. Um, and I also see an example, I'm sorry, I can't read the um, comment from Leleko in, in, I don't know in which, if I, mean, I see the, the really, translation but, of Clara's comment, really. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and I see a comment by Zed Blake or Blaze. Yeah, Jacob. Okay. And, and so web two and three are not so positive metaphors. I would be really happy to know why. Um, this is something that uh, is used in research. These terms, Web2, um, is basically um, alluding to the fact that the web has went through some uh, versions or, or iterations. And mm -hmm. in Web1, it's the beginning of the web where we only had websites that allowed to kind of showcase their 
materials, it usually, um, it was usually big commercial companies just showcasing their websites. And the, the big um, first um, evolution of the web was the end of the 90s, the beginning of the 2000, where we suddenly started to have websites that allowed users to interact, to uh, add materials, not only um, absorb and, uh, or read. And uh, Web 1 was retroactively named. I mean, first there was Web 2.0 and then there was Web 1.0. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to turn it over to Jacob. Jacob, you are not unmuted. You're saying something. I can see your lips moving, but your microphone is not working. Sorry, now? Yes, now, better? yes. Yes, absolutely yes. better. So, yeah, I mean, it's not essential for this presentation. I just don't think we should be adopting uh, terms that come from marketing and PR of corporations that are, I think, mostly pushing their own uh, agenda of constant upgrades and kind of stress over this then being really explicit about which standards have have been implemented and how so as, as someone who is coming from web development of mid 90s and, and, and late 90s i felt this uh i don't know what is the better word than hype over web 2.0 and promises of web 3.0 which are even more vague uh it is super problematic because we, we were left at many times with tons of technologies that were just like excursions into one direction and that led nowhere. I think we are on better and clear path with Wikipedia, with Wikidata, maybe with, I don't know, abstract Wikipedia, whatever, where we actually try to execute and, and perform very specific standards rather than, than joining in these like marketing terms. But that's really not essential for this uh, presentation. Sorry. No, I think that's a, such an interesting perspective and an important one as well. Um, I will mention though, that this is not only, uh, at least not from my knowledge, not only coming from marketing, but also just a way for the research community and the educational community to address these types of tools um, so in a sense, you know, I was uh, following the footsteps of people coming before me addressing this so it's easier to understand that Wikipedia is in a sense a Web2 platform, right, allowing us to, to share information, etc. And Wikidata is al already another thing um, going more to the towards the semantic web and all of that but i hear you um it's it, it could be problematic and i think it's a really interesting perspective um any i would really actually be happy to learn uh, i see here some some folks that i know um but I'm, I'm really happy to to learn more about what is happening at the ce where are your pitfalls in or challenges and in, in actually doing more with wikidata in the classroom is this a matter of resources missing? Is this because it's difficult to persuade institutions to collaborate or where, where are the challenges for you? Um, maybe I can share the experience from Czech Republic. Uh, Go ahead, Clara. We've, we've never really uh, experienced to, uh, to co-work with, uh, about with, with data with students. That's like, I would like to hear more, but maybe the first time we, we should uh, contact you or, or Israel directly. Because still for us, like the biggest challenge is even to co-work with uh, institutions. We've like, we've done a lot this year because we hire a new person who can, who can uh, help them with this. So we had like a long-term experience or like a cooperation and project with uh, with National uh, Library in, uh, in Czech Republic. And it's quite a huge project about like uh, authority data. And it's already been like <clears throat> a few hundred uh, uh, data sets like uh, combined. Sorry, I'm not a big data person. So <laughs> I hope you will understand. But we never really tried to use Wikidata in, uh, in the classrooms, even though uh, even though we do have like students uh, write Wikipedia projects and they, uh, but this is still like a lot about like human resources. And so 
I already like pointed my colleagues to look to your uh, to your presentation, especially for the bot part, because like this could be really helpful for just to like adjust the cooperation in like these like boring parts. So yeah, but I just need to like uh, hear more and think about it for the next next year. But it was it's 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 inspiring for sure. Okay, uh, we have a, we. Are... Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, we have also a comment from Mati uh, Grohal uh, uh, in, in, in the chat that the, the ever-present challenge in Slovakia, well, Mati, not, not only in Slovakia, uh, not having enough people. Mm. So not having the critical mass uh, of interested people to, to push this forward. Like I, uh, on, on Friday, I discovered that there is not much interest in Macedonia in covering the, the country with OSM, that, 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 that there is basically one or two persons one mm -hmm. or two people doing that for the whole country. So yeah. that, that's, that's also a massive challenge. Shani, yeah. do you want to comment on this or can we turn it over to Zoyko again? Uh, please, let's, let's, go to, to, um, let's go to him first and then I'll comment very briefly on the manpower issue. All right, Jacob. Yeah, um, when speaking of Wikidata, this is a little bit kind of perverse situation of being Croatian reporting to, on this. I mean, we had uh, uh, Danny Vrandacic talking about Wikidata as, as Croatian in, in uh, philosophical faculty, I think maybe six years ago. Mm. And uh, last year, sorry, earlier this year, I was trying to organize his uh, online lecture in Croatian about updates. So abstract Wikipedia would be yeah. the, 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 the new talk. Yeah. And I literally asked two friends who are in the main uh, university in a faculty of electronics and engineering, who are, one of them is teaching databases, the other is teaching algorithms. So these should be people who know about Wikidata. And they, they, never, they never heard about Wikidata. Yeah. And I was, okay, I was demoing them a little bit. They figured out the basics. And they thought, ah, this is interesting that like a Croatian guy was involved in this and there is like utopian perspective of abstract Wikipedia. So potentially all of these things are super interesting. But what it comes to it at the basic level is that students want to learn skills that will get them jobs and an idea of jobs in IT are pushed through marketing and PR of companies that have solutions that have like business uh, to, to push very, very particular solutions. So they sponsor the faculty. So they uh, like proactively go there. And I don't know if anyone from Wikimedia Foundation ever officially uh, entered Croatia, let alone approached universities, let alone approach them with proposal of doing anything like this. I know my organization was hosting Jimmy in 2005 or, or 2006, something like this. And I don't think anything happened since. So mm -hmm. to expect people to be familiar with this is a little bit, yeah, naive maybe. <laughs> well, we're not expecting. Uh, I think what you're saying is absolutely true, right? We are where we've been with Wikipedia in education maybe 15 years ago, where people where we were just starting out. So although Wikidata is nine, um, you're absolutely right. The most most of the public doesn't know it yet. And specifically, most educators don't know it, and um, most glams don't know it. And so in, in a sense, I would not focus on the naivete part, but more on, hey, we have a really interesting moment in time where we have this amazing um, tool with so much potential that people still don't know of. And what can we do to help spread the word about it? And I think Clara is absolutely right, you know, saying that part of it, part of this outreach and uh, is just presenting on it in every single place where we can. I think it was um, um, 
who was it? Someone at Wikidatacon uh, in a panel that we had on just now on Wikipedia and on Wikidata and education said, you know, every time that people ask me to speak about Wikipedia, I, I also talk about Wikidata. And I do the same because people, people still don't know. And so in a sense, I just want to comment on uh, briefly because I see that we're at time and we have to finish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll just finish the, the, the idea if I can. Um, the, the two main things are um, you don't need a lot of manpower at the beginning, not when you do the initial stages of outreach. You, all you need is one person to, to um, do a pilot and for it to be successful and you slowly and gradually grow from there. Two, um, there are, um, there's a community of people doing this. So if you need resources and you want ideas and you want help, um, there's a bunch of us uh, just really happy to help anyone who wants to do this. And, um, and finally, the low hanging fruits, um, because there are, I, I think what you did, um, Jacob is, is absolutely right to go to engineering and these, um, there are some um, subjects that are more inclined to work with Wikidata from the get go. And I think it's one of them. And I also think what Clara said before, you know, collaborating with libraries is absolutely, I mean, for libraries, it's like they're, I always say they're like our best friends um, uh, of, of the Wikimedia movements. And there are many libraries in academic institutions. So talk to the librarians, have a Wikidata workshop, um, bring faculty members to hear about that. Is there a link to it to what, sorry? Um, to, to, the, to a presentation from Wikimania that uh, was done by Andrei of uh, Petrozavodsk uh, hmm, okay. um, about I'm teaching, sure about is. him teaching Wikidata. Uh, you know, you would have to follow the, the chat a little bit back. I'm sure, I'm sure there is. Um, uh, but, but in any case, I think uh, we can all do something small in our local. It doesn't have to be big. It has to be one person doing one collaboration and you progress from there and just reach out to us through either the Wikidata community Facebook group or um, the Wikipedia and Education um, Facebook group or Telegram or whatever channel that you feel free using um, if you want help to do that. And I really hope to see some more focus on that because I think it is exciting and it is the next best, the next big thing that we can offer to education. And I know Jacob is absolutely right that there's now abstract Wikipedia, but you know, let's figure out how to explain Wikidata and the semantic web first before we jump into even more uh, complex stuff um, that are still really in really just beginning. So it's not even something that we can properly showcase, but we can showcase Wikidata and we can do things with it um, in the classroom. So that's it, folks. Thank you so much for attending and for joining. I hope this was useful to some of you. And I look forward to seeing you later. Right, perfect, thank you. So with this uh, conclusion, find one person who can do it, who can do a pilot thing. And if in need, contact the Wikidata team or the, uh, or the education team of Wikipedia. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to thank you deeply, uh, Shani, for, for the presentation and uh, the other people for asking questions, making comments.